Mortal Kombat 1, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a great source of discussion these past few days, particularly where the Switch version is concerned, which Warner Brothers decided to sell at a full $70 price point for the standard edition and $110 for the premium edition, the same price point as the far superior PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series versions, as well as the PC version. I've already talked about all of the woes surrounding the Switch version of the game. Nintendo Live had given the game a 40 out of 100, saying that Mortal Kombat 1 on Switch manages to deliver the superb game story and towers modes in a state that's playable, but only if you've got plenty of patience. There are frame rate issues, big resolution dips, input and timing problems related to performance drops, missing content, game breaking bugs in invasion mode, long loading times, so on and so forth. The list just keeps going. Uh, unresponsive menus. If you're a huge Mortal Kombat fan whose only option is switched, you may uh, be able to press through all this. However, if you have any other option, we suggest you stay away from this one for now. And IGN released their own review recently where they said Mortal Kombat 1 proves to be too much for the Nintendo Switch's dated hardware, the load times are egregious. There are numerous bugs plaguing both graphics and gameplay, making for a poor quality port of a great game that's all around aggravating to play. They gave this game a 3 out of 10, so you know what the general consensus is going to look like as more reviews pour in. Right here on Twitter, they also talk about horrendous loading times, inconsistent frame rates, muddy visuals, plethora of bugs, so on and so forth. It's just... Um, it's straight up robbery to charge $70 for this version of the title. Now, I've shown off plenty of comparisons on social media. Here's footage of Johnny Cage and just how much worse the Switch version looks with its complete lack of facial expression on top of all the other graphical downgrades. And seeing the game in motion doesn't make it any better. Right here, for example, we have graphics that look so poor that it could honestly be mistaken for a PS2 game. It really just looks that bad especially as we get close-ups of character models, like right here. I mean, it's like they didn't even try with this. So yeah, there are plenty of screenshots and footage of the Switch version to go around. Here's a compilation. Here is footage from this uh, content creator. And right here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of just how much of a downgrade uh, character models are. I mean, just this is night and day. And while this has all been a source of great comedy, especially looking at close-ups like these, it doesn't change the fact that people paid $70 for the Switch version, not knowing just how bad it was going to be. In fact, looking at footage from IGN's review right here, the performance issues in particular become very apparent. Look how stuttery all of this looks and how awful the graphics are. Again, PS2 levels, like prototype PS2 game levels of awful and how blurry the footage looks doesn't help matters either and as we fast forward yeah i mean look at this mortal kombat should have never been ported over to the switch if this was the level of graphics and performance and technical bugginess we could expect out of it Yeah, the performance issues in particular, just how stuttery everything is, that's especially egregious. That's what makes this fighting game where you need that responsiveness just not viable. And yeah, I mean, look at that. That says everything right there. Now, $70 is a ripoff as it is, but what makes this situation all the more egregious is the way marketing hid just how bad the Switch version was going to be with the trailers that they showed. For example, right here, IGN reports that the official Mortal Kombat 1 Nintendo Switch gameplay has Steam achievements pop up, suggesting that the footage that they showed for the so-called Switch version of the game was actually the PC version. And if you look around the internet and look at official marketing material, there is never any footage for the Switch version that's ever been released to the public. So this right here, this screenshot from IGN shows the achievement from Steam. And you can see the visuals look way better than they actually do on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this trailer has since been deleted or rather made private. If you click on the link to this video, this is what will show because, well... The backlash has been bad enough where they felt it was necessary to pull this video back and also likely to hide evidence potentially. But, you know, the Internet has seen what they've seen. The marketing was, in fact, blatantly deceptive. Uh, this was this is just pure false marketing in its worst form, showing a version of the game that is not representative of the product on the platform that you'll be playing it on. I do not know how game companies can get away with stuff like this. This should be grounds for lawsuits. 
This should be grounds for customers being able to get refunds, no questions asked. And because this is the Nintendo Switch version and Nintendo's so stingy about offering refunds, a lot of people will have paid $70 for the portable version of Mortal Kombat 1 that is so inferior that it's as good as like unplayable. Uh, literally, the performance issues make it just not the ideal way to play this game, but also it looks so ugly and so downgraded that even if it does offer portability, it's still not worth all the compromises that Switch players have to suffer. And for those who felt duped because the marketing showed footage that was not representative of the Switch version, that was actually just a PC version, when they asked for refunds, guess what? Nintendo will not accept returns or exchanges for the following items, including any digital item, including digital games. Digital content is not eligible for refunds, so people are stuck with their piss poor $70 purchase and will have wasted a significant amount of money that could have gone to another version of Mortal Kombat 1 or other games in general. Not only did Warner Brothers never show off the Switch version of Mortal Kombat 1 during the marketing cycle of the game prior to Mortal Kombat 1's launch, but even now, if you go to Mortal Kombat 1's listing on the Nintendo Store, you'll discover that on top of the fact that it's still $70 somehow for the Standard Edition and $110 for the Premium Edition, there are no images or videos showing what the Switch version looks like. They're actively neglecting to include information that would very much inform people's purchase decisions. All they have here is the cover art for Mortal Kombat 1. They're not showing any gameplay screenshots or gameplay footage of the Switch version. They're trying to keep customers in the blind. And what this will lead to is a scenario where plenty of people who don't keep up with gaming news or maybe more casual gamers, but who know Mortal Kombat because it's freaking Mortal Kombat will buy the Switch version, not realizing just how bad it plays, how bad it looks, how bad it performs. And they'll feel like they'll have thrown $70 away to Warner Brothers, a company that knew that this is not an ideal port, but shipped it anyway, because they're aware that the install base of the Nintendo Switch is enormous at over 100 million now and they can take advantage of this player base to make some extra bucks, all off of a version of the game that is unquestionably inferior and whose inferiority was never made clear, was never marketed, was never made transparent to purchasers, and they dare to charge $70 for this shit. This is literally some of the most egregious case of AAA false marketing that I've ever seen. And I hope there are consequences to this because game companies should never be allowed to do this. By the way, this is the level of egregious loading times we can expect out of the Switch version. That was five times the speed. So th this is, I mean, this is like hard disk drive days levels of bad. To start a match in a fighting game, to have to wait that long on top of the, you know, the stutters and all these things. It, this is absolutely something that should be called out and something that should be scrutinized and something that should not just slip by without consequences. Too many game companies, corporations, and publishers have gotten too comfortable pulling off shit like this, shipping games like these, charging full price, and keeping this kind of vital information behind the veil until the game launches and letting people find out for themselves that they wasted $70 on a product that is worth nowhere near that. And it's the fact that their deception continues with the lack of transparency on the Nintendo store and them still charging full price for this. And now there's evidence out there that they represented the Switch version of the game through the PC version through a completely different platform with completely different levels of quality. And now they're trying to backpedal this and trying to bury the evidence by making this video private from the Nintendo channel, the Nintendo Switch version's launch trailer. But that's not going to go away now that it's been reported, now that it's been documented. And hopefully this will lead to some kind of recourse and uh, all of this evidence gathered will allow the company to suffer some semblance of consequences for a practice that should not be normalized. Shame on Warner Brothers for marketing the game, this version of the game, the way they did and for selling it at the price point that they did and for just fucking over consumers and customers just 
very intentionally, knowing full well exactly what they're doing. Now, Ed Boon has come out and said that the Switch version will be fixed. Here's an article from BBC's Newspeed. They spoke to series creator Ed Boon, who told BBC Newspeed that the hybrid consoles version will absolutely be getting an update, and a number of the concerns of the issues that had come up will absolutely be addressed. It would have been ideal for us to have released the version that we absolutely wanted, but anything that we're finding a problem with is on our list and is going to be fixed. This quote right here is interesting. It would have been ideal for us to have released a version that we absolutely wanted. I'm curious if he's trying to low-key imply that it was not up to him and that it was Warner Brothers who said, no, 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 the Switch version is coming out at the same time as all the other platforms to capitalize on the day one hype, maximize sales during that launch period when people tend to buy the most copies of a game. I don't, I'm not sure. I imagine that Ed Boon knew that... Uh, the Switch version was not something the team should be proud of and not something that uh, customers would enjoy or find excusable. But, you know, publishers being who they are and uh, being corporations who have to appeal to their uh, investors and wanting to maximize sales for their products, yeah, they, they will um, mandate whatever it is they want to mandate, be it, you know, strict deadlines for release dates, even for versions of games that are absolutely not ready for launch or marketing deceptions that should be grounds for legal action. But that's one man's opinion. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the current state of Mortal Kombat 1 for the Nintendo Switch and the marketing deceptions and woe surrounding it. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.